When completing a problem like this, ladies and gentlemen, we have the, the half angle formula, which says sine of u divided by 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine of u, uh, 1 minus cosine of u divided by 2. All right? And what we're going to simply do is now I want to find sine of 3 pi over 8. Now, some of you got very close. And when getting you know, very close to this problem, if you don't want to write down this first step, you don't have to. But I found a lot of people that didn't even get to the first step. And really, the first step is one of the easiest parts we can do for this problem. So if you're really, really confused, you want to start with this. If I say sine of u divided by 2 is equal to this, and then I say, what is sine of 3 pi over 8? First thing we know is these two are in the same spots, right? These are equivalent to each other. So if you kind of got stuck on this problem, the first step you're always going to want to do is set your half angle equal to your other half angle. So you can say that u divided by 2 is equal to 3 pi over 8. OK, Rachel? All right. So now the next step is obviously we have to solve for u. Because why do we have to solve for u? Well, if you guys look into the formula, that's not asking us to find the cosine of u divided by 2, is it? It doesn't say u divided by 2. It says just tell me what the cosine of u is. So if we know u over 2, what is u? Well, to do that, we multiply by 2 on both sides. Those divide out to 1. This reduces down to over 4. So therefore, I say u equals 3 pi over 4. So now what I can do is I can plug 3 pi over 4 in for my u. So therefore, I write plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of 3 pi over 4 divided by 2. Is everybody following with that? So now we say, all right, the cosine of an angle. Well, we've been practicing finding the cosines of angles for since chapter 4. So what we do is we go to our unit circle, and we figure out where is the cosine of 3 pi over 4. Well, here's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. And we know that 3 pi over 4 has a coordinate point of negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Right? So therefore, you can say the cosine, which is dealing with your x coordinate, is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we have plus or minus the square root of 1 minus negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by 2. Is that right? Kind of following me so far with what I've done. All right. Then the next thing is notice our angle. Our angle is in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, is the sine of an angle positive or negative? Is the sine of the angle positive, positive or negative? Positive. It's positive. So instead of doing the plus or minus, we're only going to be working with the positive value. All right? So we're not going to include the negative value because we're only concerned about the positive value because our angle is in the second quadrant. All right, so now we look at this and we say, all right, now we need to simplify this. Well, we have a fraction in the numerator and then divided by a number. So we need to get rid of this fraction. To get rid of the fractions, we need to multiply by 2. Because 2 multiplied by 1 or square root of 2 over 2, the 2's are going to divide out to 1. But wherever you multiply in the numerator, you have to make sure you multiply in the denominator. And then notice you're multiplying not by a number like you are in the denominator, but here you're multiplying by a binomial. So you need to make sure you put the whole thing in parentheses and apply distributive property. So therefore, I now have positive square root of 2. Double negative turns now to a positive. Now the 2's are going to cancel out. We've got to remember to also multiply that by 2. So it's going to be 2. And then you'll have um, plus the square root of 2 over 2 times 2 is 4. Let's bring this down a little bit farther. All right? Then we know that, or hopefully we know that, you can break up the square root into square root of 2 plus square root of 2 over the square root of 4. All right? You can break up a square root when using division to the top and to the bottom. Yes? Well, you've got to multiply by 2 over 2. If you just multiply, one thing, if you, you, when you're multiplying a fraction, you have to multiply the same fra you have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Right? Because yeah. think of you know, two, two fourths, that's equal to 1 half, right? So, but if you multiply by 2 over 2, that gives you 4 over 8. And are those equal to each other? 
Yeah, so you have to multiply by 2 over 2, right? But you don't have to get the 2 off the bottom? Down here? Yeah. No, not initially right now. Um, if you did, if you, no, because what's going to happen is we don't have to get it off the bottom. We just want to multiply by 2. I see what you're kind of getting at is getting this 2 off. But remember, if you're just going to multiply by one number 2, then that means you have to multiply by 2 on the other side of the equation, right? So what I'm doing is I'm just multiplying by 2 over 2 right now. And what that does, that reduces it to here, which now I can take the square root of 4, right? The square root of 4 is 2. So therefore, now my next point is going to be the square root of 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. And you could also break that up into 1 half times the square root of 2 plus square root of 2. OK? So that's how you work your problem. OK? Is that it? Can you reduce any further? That is going to be your final reduced problem. If I multiply by 2 over 2, then I have to multiply by 2 over 2. 